you're not quite sure what methods are available, then again, you can uh, ask Ruby what methods are accessible. And as I said, everything from the most primitive object onwards has some methods associated with it because the, the topmost object in Ruby has some built-in methods which will be inherited by everything in, in everything else that you care to define in, in Ruby. Another aspect which we'll go into a lot more, more, um, a, a lot more detail in the, the next le lecture. Another aspect which is used extensively in Rails is Ruby's support for regular expressions. Um, so we see here some some very simple examples of regular expressions. Uh, the definition of one. Um, the regular expression itself identified by the, the, the slashes. So the, the content between those two slashes is the regular expression. We've got something very simple, which is a, a um, completely determined string which we're looking for. And then if we want to match uh, to see if a regular expression matches to a string, then we use the equals and twiddle sign which says asks the interpreter if the regular expression on the right hand side can be matched against something so at, uh, can be matched at some point uh, in the string on the left hand side so uh, there will be a a nil returned on that first example but on the second example uh, better will match on that string on the left hand side. Um, again, try it out for yourself to see exactly what happens. What you'll see is two things happen on that second example. Firstly, you'll get a positive response that there is a match and secondly, you'll get a value of the point of the first match, the starting point of the first match in that string. We can also do interesting things with containers, again, quite, uh, quite dynamically and quite succinctly. So without needing to develop any kind of main method, I can straight away get the functionality of a stack by assigning a container to the variable stack. And then I can push something onto it. I can put a cat onto it. I can pop the cat back off to it. And then if I just ask for stack, I will get the uh, original stack that I entered with. So the standard uh, demonstration or test that something you've implemented is in fact a, uh, a stack. Push something onto it, pop it off, and check you've got what you started with it. Um, and we haven't had to do any coding there. I, I'm using straight away an ar array uh, with the behavior of a stack because that push method and those push and pop methods are um, designed in uh, to containers uh, as part of Ruby. So just a, a, few, a few pointers as to what, in a sense, makes Ruby nice as a programming language. It gained, uh, as I said, some, some currency quite quickly as what was claimed by many a, a language which could act as a specification language could be used much more declaratively than, than Java. But it was Rails that really made it take off. And the two worked very synergistically. So many of the things that I've spoken about are features which Rails exploits intensively. So the, the choice of Ruby was a natural one for the Rails community, for those that developed Rails as a framework. The other, the other, in a sense, bit of technology that underlies Rails is the use of the model view controller design pattern. Um, so structuring your interactive web application using this, this is nothing exclusive by any means to Rails. It is just that Rails early on started to use this design pattern, and you're now seeing a number of other web frameworks using the same design pattern. 
good practice and many people were already using that. Um, we'll <coughs> when we come back to Rails we'll talk through this in a lot more detail but uh, essentially the controller is going to handle the request received from the browser. Its business is to handle requests to identify which parts of the model then need to be accessed. The model captures the business logic, that's pure Ruby code which is going on there, and once the response to the request has been generated from the model then control, the controller will pass on uh, the information that's needed to the view, a view will be generated and then rendered back in the browser. I don't mention anything about the database because increasingly uh, as Rails continues to be developed you need to worry less and less about the database. The database becomes barely visible. Rails as a framework does most of the work for you and when you're developing your application if you're using uh, SQL Lite, as many recommend you use, then you don't really need to think about the database. Da that'll be generated for you by Rails. All of the database updates, all of the database accesses will be handled for you. All you need to worry about is the model itself. It's really rather elegant uh, how that, that works. Um, um, but a key part of it, which you will need to know a little bit to, about to make sure that you understand how to do things in a way that uh, exploit the value of Rails, is Rails' is object relational mapping. A fairly standard one, but supported very neatly in Rails uh, to, for many applications, enable you to almost completely forget about what's going on in the database backend. An important design pattern because access of that very valuable IP in the database is carefully controlled by the controller and buffered by the model and so it is possible to build secure applications where um, there is a very, very low chance of uh, any un unauthorized access to the database. Can't say zero chance, but uh, if you build your application sensibly, then you minimize the risk of, of unauthorized ac access to the database. It's as good as anything you can get nowadays. So that's a very quick introduction. Um, talked a little bit about Ruby. We'll talk a lot more in the le next lecture. We very briefly introduced Rails, not really saying too much about what it does, but saying a little bit about the philosophy behind it in terms of um, limiting the need to repeat yourself, using conventions to free you up from doing basic coding and only um, uh, needing you to focus on, on the innovation, the, the clever parts. Um, and the fact that this is supported, good practice is supported within Rails by the use of this model view controller design pattern. Um, a next start, uh, you can go away yourself and, and take a look at uh, uh, some of the quick start tutorials in, in Rails uh, on, the, on the NetBeans website. Um, Make sure you've got a database. SQLite 3 will come bundled it once, uh, automatically if you set up um, NetBeans with all the Rails uh, support. Um, we'll talk in the next few lectures on the assumption that you're using S SQLite 3, but we will later on talk a lot more about migrating to MySQL because uh, what you will want to do when you're migrating your, your um, development application to a production version, you almost certainly want to migrate to MySQL and support MySQL and other databases is um, uh, 
um, built into to Rails, so there's no constraint on that. Um, but the generation of the database can be done entirely automatically if you're using a, a, um, a file-based database like SQLite 3. So a little bit of homework for you. Take a look at one of those quick start guides, just do a little bit of experimentation. Make sure and make sure that you've got uh, NetBeans set up for you. If you look at the associated material with this course, you'll also find some additional pointers on helping you get getting NetBeans set up. Uh, a, a Rails project set up with, with NetBeans and, and a screencast to talk you through uh, some basics.